Space Research, Moscow, Russia. Professor Elena's expertise is in theoretical physics in the field of theory of critical phenomena. She has contributed to the understanding of critical transitions with the new theory of nonlinear saturation of pre bifurcation noise amplification and the rise of the correlation time. Obtained theoretical findings gave rise to a series of new results in different fields, such as cardiac dynamics, liquid crystal dynamics, climate dynamics, and monsoon forecasting. As a part of the International Climate Initiative, Professor Elena leads the group on Indian monsoon forecasting. We're very glad you could join us today, Professor Elena. And a small, and a small note to the participants, please use the Q&A to enter your questions and do upward questions that interest you so that the moderator can prioritize them later on. Over to you, Professor Sayan. Thank you, Ruchi. Uh, I'll just try to share the screen. Yeah, is it visible? Yes, you can go ahead, we can see. It. Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, so I am Sayan Gupta. I'm going to uh, speak about this initiative of ours, of Complex Systems and Dynamics. Uh, before I uh, do that, I would just like to make a brief introduction about where we are. We are in uh, IIT Madras in, in Chennai, which is in the southern part of the country. And it's a steaming, uh, it's the fourth largest city of India with a population of about seven and a half million. And uh, what is not usually said is that it has a very long beach and a very beautiful beach. So if you are interested in all this, Chennai is the place to come. Also, we are in a IIT Madras campus is lush green, very beautiful. And it is part, it was earlier a part of the Gindi National Park. And it has lots of nice uh, flowers, uh, fl flora and fauna. So it's, uh, I hope these pictures will uh, entice you to come and visit us. Okay, going back to the uh, research aspect of complex dynamical systems. So when we are dealing with very complicated uh, systems like the human brain, which is made up of billions of neurons, or we are talking about the ocean atmosphere coupling like uh, in planetary on planetary scale, or we are talking about social dynamics like uh, shoals of fish, flocks of birds, epidemics, biomimetic flows and dynamics and active flows. So if you're uh, analyzing or if you're interested in studying these systems, the traditional reductionist approaches that we adopt in science and engineering are not really suitable for analyzing the collective behavior. So it is where we, uh, this complex systems comes into the picture where we marry the fundamental principles of the physics of the system the, coupled with the empirical observations and experimental uh, data. And now with the advent of technology, we have the ability to collect voluminous amount of data. So all these, when we uh, together couple each other and form what is the new approach to the analysis of the systems. So this is an emerging interdisciplinary field and this is what complex dynamical systems is all about. And we are interested in the dynamics of this type of complex systems. So this is a inter, as you can well imagine, this involves an interdisciplinary approach to the research. And as a group, we have been, uh, as an informally, we have been uh, in existence since 2017. And uh, my seniors tell me that uh, in some other form, this there was an earlier, another group about 10, 15 years back in the physics department. But this group now has taken a much more structured shape uh, very recently. And in here we have, um, I'll just introduce my colleagues. We have Nilima here, who's a prof emeritus professor in physics department. We have Srinivas, who is uh, in biotechnology. His areas of interest is in computational neuroscience. Then we have Srinetra from aerospace engineering. Her interest is in biomimetic flows, fluid structure interaction. Mahesh is from applied mechanics department, interested in pulmonary fluid dynamics, aerosol and atomization. Anubhav is again on a colleague from Applied Mechanics with an interest in complex fluids, geophysical fluid dynamics. Sumesh is from Chemical Engineering with interest in soft and active matter, complex fluids. Arun is from Chemical Engineering, who's an expert in causal networks, process control, data analytics. 
and of course i am this is my sign i am my research interest as uh, is in stochastic dynamical systems apart from this we have a very uh, em group of eminent uh, researchers uh, along the uh, from the all over the world who are uh, our collaborators we have professor coots from Potsdam Institute uh, uh, for Climate Impact Research in Germany. Madhav uh, is from Biocomplexity Institute, Virginia. Elena, who is the moderator today, is for, again from Potsdam Institute in Germany. Henning is from Virginia Tech, USA. Didier is from CNRS, France. Murlid is from Temsec Lab, uh, National University of Singapore. Gabriel is from Buen University of Buena, uh, Buenos Aires, Aires in Argentina. Srinivas uh, is from Georgia Tech. Anna is again from University of Buenos Aires in Argentina. Aravind Srinivasan is from University of Maryland. Arup is from Northeastern University. Wusuk is from uh, Stockholm University. Jiansi is from Rensselaer Polytechnic. Kirti is from uh, Biological Systems Engineering in Washington University. Sarah is from Freie University Berlin, also from Global Climate Forum. Vivek is from University of Miami, USA. Zoltan is from University of Notre Dame. And Biao is from University of Alberta, Canada. And we have Udit uh, from uh, India, uh, from Civil Engineering and IIT Gandhinagar. So together, this team, as you can well see, that encompasses a broad areas of, uh, um, they have a broad expertise in different uh, research areas. And we hope to uh, all come together and solve some uh, interesting problems over the next uh, uh, few years. The, what we are looking through the international collaborations is essentially some joint research in, through joint mentoring of PhDs and postdocs. We intend to have regular seminars. In fact, we have been having seminars off and on in an informal way since 2017, but now we want to regularize that, organize some thematic schools and workshops, two of which I'm going to announce today at the end of this presentation, short-term courses. We want to host international experts uh, as visiting faculty. And, uh, this is also a very uh, innovative uh, thing that has been started by IIT Madras. This is the, we are looking to recruit recent doctoral graduates who are on as a, as a on tenure track positions for full time faculty, and this is open for non Indian citizens and non OCI. Uh, and uh, under this umbrella, we are planning to uh, recruit at least two uh, young international faculty. So uh, with this, I will uh, hand over to my colleague Neelima to take you uh, through the, some of the trust research directions, uh, which is the aim of this uh, center and some of the research uh, position, uh, research pro uh, projects that are ongoing. Uh, yeah, you can hear me, right? Yes, yes. Go on, Neelima. Yeah, so, uh, okay, my net has gone in fact, and I'm on the phone. So let's hope for the best, just warning you. Okay, so uh, could you advance the page? Right. So in fact, uh, Sian said this right at the beginning that uh, what the center plans to do is to in fact study complex dynamical systems. And here on this slide, we have examples of a number of complex dynamical systems. For example, couple neurons in brains, social dynamics in epidemics, biomimetic flows and dynamics, active flows, <clears throat> And uh, we have members of the group who work on all this. And a very important direction, which we hope this initiative will be able to research direction, which we hope this initiative will be able to take up seriously is data-driven dynamics. For example, things like climate dynamics and ocean atmospheric coupling. Okay. So we'll be saying a little more about this, uh, about our research programs shortly. Uh, right now, can we go to the next slide, Sam? Yeah. So what is the idea? The point, the idea is that reductionist approaches, I mean, for those who are unfamiliar with this, um, reductionist approaches are very unsuitable for modeling collective behavior. Okay. 
and that is because collections of individual entities with evolving individual entities which are coupled together can behave in a way which is very different from the way in which single entities behave okay and this is a very so the study of such systems like sian has said is an emerging interdisciplinary field and it can be attacked from various angles so one thing is one should understand how these systems behave there are so many systems which behave like this as you saw from the examples on the previous side and there is voluminous data which is available for example the climate system in which professor elena who is the moderator today works on actually can in fact be modeled in ways in which we use the techniques of we use the techniques of complex systems as well as complex networks yeah next slide uh, okay so here is a little bit about complex networks so as far as complex networks are concerned now we are all familiar with regular networks for example a regular lattice for example uh, the kind of uh, lattices we study in solid state physics are in fact regular lattices where in fact the neighborhoods are connected in a simplest in a simple way if we look at complex networks then in the case of complex networks the neighborhoods are not really connected in a simple way and secondly you can model many many kinds of systems by complex networks okay for example to take the example which is on the top of everybody's uh, lost nilima uh can you hear me yeah we can we can you can you can hear me yeah yeah can yeah we, yeah, yeah. yeah. so to take the example which is on top of everybody's mind this year namely epidemic spread <laughs> the spread of epidemics on human networks or on uh, in fact biological networks but the networks of biological populations can always be modeled by a complex networks there are social networks which in fact can be modeled by there are social networks which can be modeled by Uh, complex networks an example of this uh, am i audible yes ma'am okay because i have lost the screen but okay <clears throat> it doesn't matter so the thing is that uh, there are sociological networks there are social networks which can all be modeled by complex networks plus in addition to this like we said in the case of epidemic spread there are in fact processes where in fact uh, there are processes which can occur with the with the network with the complex network as a substrate okay. and in fact professor bosa tadic who is here right now and i have long been involved in studying processes on dynamic networks bosa maybe you could say two minutes about the kind of work which we have been doing <laughs> spend two minutes on it and i was planning to ask you later but the way my net is going this is yeah. the best i <laughs> myself okay it's yeah. interesting how nelly may evolve be in this uh, without telling me in advance to prepare anything but uh, she could to. she could tell also because we worked for a few years together um and uh, uh currently very interesting subjects uh, is dynamics on simplicial complexes um and we also evolved in that and the major idea is that uh, uh, most of these complex systems have uh, that can be represented by networks actually have hidden geometry which goes beyond pairwise connections which is called network and uh, they can be recognized mathematically as simplicial complexes so uh, we recognize them in many networks starting from the brain let's say as a most interesting uh, system uh, complex systems but also in social and many many other areas in material science as well so um interesting thing is that the simplex this are for instance for instance um aggregates of cliques triangles tetrahedrons and so on in different ways they aggregated mathematically precisely defined 
So they actually can house interactions which are beyond pair race interaction, like interaction on a triangle, four point interaction on a well, four click and so on and so on. And uh, many, uh, in, in general, many body interactions which cannot be reduced to pair race interactions, okay? So this, these are new concepts in the dynamics of complex systems, which probably um, are the uh, trace new ways, new, new paths to, towards understanding why such complex systems like brain, for instance, are functioning precisely and stably, um, um, having so many connections inside the brain regions recognize that there's knots of the network and so on. So dynamical phenomena on these networks, uh, this kind type of mathematical structures, uh, knots and simplicial complexes or hyper networks is more, in more general terms, are now um, cutting edge of science of complexity. So I think, uh, I don't know if Nelima wants me more, but um, okay, I think we can... this is just, uh, just uh, what do you say? Uh, that that was that was nice, but I think people might have questions later. Which uh, yeah, okay, all okay. right, thank you. But thank that will take a while. That, yeah, that, so. and thank you so much for doing this all right. All right. off thank the you. top of your head. And uh, yeah, we can can we go back, Sian? I mean, or the, to the next slide, the next one. Yeah, yeah. So basically, I don't want to go into details of networks at this point. What I want to say is that there's a very, there are many important systems. I want to go to actually, so what we said was evolving dynamical processes. Then we said complex networks. And what I would like to next emphasize is what is the contribution of data which can, uh, which can actually help us construct things like networks. Okay. So there is a very important way, very important difference in which actually complex systems have been studied in the past and the way in which complex systems have been studied in the, can be studied in the last few years. Namely, there is now huge data available, which was not available in earlier years. Okay. So in fact, this huge data can be put to use or can be analyzed in many ways. And that enables us to analyze, that, that enables us to analyze systems as well as find applications, which in fact did not exist in the past. Okay. Like for example, to look at sets of examples, to look at the kinds of examples which uh, we have been looking at you can use the huge amount of data which is available about climates to construct climate networks and they can use to predict things about the climate. Okay. There's a huge amount of data, data which is available about let's say financial networks or networks of banks which can be put to use to in fact find information about the way in which the directions in which the stock market will, will evolve or for that matter catastrophic events like financial crashes. And as you can see, the knowledge or the prediction or even the analysis of such events can have very important economic and ecological consequences. So this is the third angle from which at least we have envisaged that we can actually study, uh, we can actually study complex networks. Okay? So the three heads which we are looking at is dynamics, then networks, and the third thing is data. And we'll be saying more, in fact, my colleagues will be saying more about each one of these three angles. Okay. There's an important thing which we have been doing in the context of, in the context of this research initiative. And one of, the, one, of the, one of our oldest ideas which we finally put into action this year was to actually construct a degree program, an interdisciplinary degree program on complex systems and dynamics. Okay. I think we said this in the beginning, Cyan emphasized this in the beginning, is that this is a huge intra-departmental effort. Okay. So in fact, as you probably saw in the, uh, we'll skip the ongoing research projects, uh, uh, Cyan, just go to the I2PD. Yeah. 
where in fact we have set up an interdisciplinary so this is a very new area this is a very new area complex systems and dynamics programs do exist in other countries but to the best of our knowledge in india this is the first degree program and the other programs which we have also exist in other countries are not very old okay so this is a new direction and we thought that we have exactly the right combinations of students who can actually benefit by this kind of program who would be interested both in what are the universal features of the kind of systems that we are looking at as well as in the in the kind of applications that such systems can be put to okay so uh, can i have the next slide sir yeah so what are the program objectives and i should say that it's sir who was crucial in putting together the entire structure of this this is to train students in the mathematical modeling of complex dynamical systems to build networks from models of data to analyze the systems using theories of networks nonlinear dynamics stochastic dynamics and in these modern times and that also in the context of iit which is exactly suited to doing this data analysis and machine learning okay. so data science techniques are extremely important for this okay. high performance computing for which we have a major center okay. and hands on experience through projects okay um just one more slide the next slide please okay so we have set this program which has a, there is a curriculum which has a core of uh, 30 credits uh you can essentially take courses from three core baskets which is networks nonlinear dynamics mathematics and and mathematics and numerical analysis okay and there is a certain number of courses which have been set as compulsorily for each one of from each one of these core baskets okay we have something like we have a huge collection of about 45 electives which is available due to the fact that we really belong to eight or nine departments okay. and again we can accommodate a very large number of projects we have given because of the kind of because of the kind of program that we have we have given heavy emphasis to the project so there will be something like 85 projects when we start telling you about the kind of research projects we are working on then in fact we know that uh, we will be able to tell you what kind of projects we are in a position to offer people and this is a total program of about 160 credits it is hoped that the students uh, who emerge from this program will have a variety of options i'll just show you what the curriculum looks like the next slide please sir okay so here is the first core basket here is the second core basket can we see the next one yeah this is the mathematics basket and uh, the electives not that anybody can read it but just to show you how many possible electives are there okay and they go all the way from mathematical physics to the hydrodynamics of complex fluids about which my colleagues will be talking the data driven modeling of process systems etc now where can the applications of these systems be found and the applications of these systems can actually be found as we said in here is this list like i started off with climate science where in fact we have done some stuff which is related to predictions we have a joint product with professor elena which is actually related to climate science and we hope that there will be students who will be joining on this project some of my colleagues works on computational neuroscience there's machine learning in fluid dynamics as we said earlier biomimetic flows there's complex flow and physics of living matter urban climate modeling science own work on stochastic dynamics the dynamics of social behavior and again i repeat who needs to end at this point needs to be reminded of the importance of epidemic modeling so these are in fact possible research areas on which there are current projects on which on which there are current projects and in fact on which there are current problems there are also possible industry applications you can actually have applications of these to for example financial systems plus uh, 
geophysical systems, as we earlier said, climate systems, and as far as industry applications are concerned, I leave this to my colleague, Professor Mahesh, who is in a better position to tell you about it than I am. So, uh, uh, could you, yeah, Sayan, could I hand over back to you? Yeah, thanks, uh, Mahesh. Yeah. Good afternoon. Uh, the center is very clearly uh, positioned at the cusp of uh, science and engineering. Um, many of us are faculty in the schools of engineering, but interested in the, a science informed in developing science informed solutions to complex problems. So the, the core approach is to develop a deeper understanding of the set of problems that, that uh, Nilima talked about and Shayan mentioned, and, uh, and to help industry and society at large benefit from the understanding that is developed from uh, an analysis of this problem. The problems themselves are, are very application motivated. And that's one of the, I feel, the uh, distinguishing features of our approach to selecting the problems. Shyan, next slide. So uh, just to highlight some of the application areas of emphasis, climate science, as Nilima mentioned, uh, you know, there is a large group of uh, banking and insurance that is uh, currently not, not aware or not sure how to model long-term climate change related risk into their modeling. So the science that we develop uh, as part of these projects would help that group of stakeholders make better decisions. Neuroscience is an area that doesn't require much uh, description. Uh, uh, Brain-inspired computing is an application that's, that's looming on the horizon. Biological systems, understanding how biological systems operate and self-organize is, is, of, is of interest to many different applications, including uh, you know, polymer thin films, particulate coatings. There are many different examples in engineered systems where self-organization plays a role. Uh, again, we don't have to dwell much on the multi-physics systems and active flows. They are part of pretty much any smart engineered system these days as is a multi-physics system. So a complex dynamic, complex systems approach would help the cause a great deal. Again, the last one doesn't require much uh, introduction, the financial markets, all of us are embedded in them. And understanding the dynamics of financial markets and social networks as a from a complex network viewpoint would certainly help uh, the banking, insurance, uh, and, and, and the regulators make better decisions. So that's the core approach with bringing on industry partners. We have uh, a small group of industry partners that have already signed on. We expect a larger number to come on. And we expect to bring these partners on through three different uh, sort of approaches. One is to form an industry consortium which, which would have members of the consortium would have visibility into the work being done in the center. The second is where a particular industry partner may be in, interested in working with a small group of researchers on a very clearly identified project. That's the second mode of interaction. The third is through workshops like this, which would be periodically conducted where industry partners would be brought on board to first be made aware and for us to learn from them as to what the emerging problems are as well. So with, for example, Climate, climate Policy Initiative is a, is a think tank that uh, helps governments understand climate change and factoring climate change into their thinking, into government's thinking broadly. So we hope to partner with them and extract and learn from their domain expertise in doing a better job of modeling, uh, of positioning our solutions to be of use to them. Uh, so that's our approach with uh, industry partnerships. Over to you, back to you, Shayan. Yeah, thanks, uh, Mahesh. Uh, I would now like to go back to the research uh, problems that we are currently working on, just to give a overview of the type of uh, problems that are currently we are working on. So I'll just quickly go through, and if you have questions, we have all the uh, all of our collaborators here, so they can answer uh, questions. So one aspect is machine learning in complex flow fields. This is being done by Professor Sunetra Sarkar. So here, uh, uh, 
I, I will just skip through quickly because we are running out of time. And this is also biomimetic flows. Again, this is uh, uh, this is an area which is being led by Professor Sunetra Sarkar from Aerospace. Then we have skew analysis of networks, symplectic networks. I think this is uh, led by Professor Neelima. Oh. Then climate dynamics. Yeah, actually, Neelima, you actually, want to say something? yeah, I, Professor Bosa, in fact, was referring to exactly this. Yeah, so. We've already said a little bit about it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, go on. Okay. Yeah, this is again climate dynamics. This is again Nilima's uh, area of work. So I think you have already mentioned. I've already said that. About yeah. Nilima, right? Okay. We, so we did a little bit of prediction on El Nino La Nina. And uh, let's see. Let's see where it goes. You could skip this. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this is an uh, initiative that is led by Professor Srinivas Chakravarti from Biotechnology. He is uh, uh, around here, so if we have any questions, we can come back to this uh, later stage. So this is about bird songs. I think this is also, again, Nilima is involved in this work. You could skip that also. We did, uh, we did various kinds of data analysis of this, but you could go on. <laughs> Proceed, please. Yeah, this is something that I work on, noise-induced noise transitions. So it is how noise affects the uh, dynamics of uh, nonlinear systems and how the, the bifurcation behaviors are changed and it leads to noise-induced intermittency, basin hopping, and many other very interesting phenomena, which has uh, important implications in the, both engineering as well as in even in systems like climate. And... Uh, yeah, noise-induced transitions is also, this is something that uh, I am trying to work and, uh, uh, and these are some new areas that I'm trying to uh, work uh, in. Uh, we had some other uh, problems here. Uh, yeah, causal discovery of complex systems. I think this is something that is led by uh, Arun from Chemical Engineering. How uh, then active flows uh, this is something that is uh, led by uh, Anubhav and Sumesh. And uh, uh, Mahesh also works on something uh, related to pulmonary uh, uh, efficiency of pulmonary, uh, how sprays and droplets uh, can be influence the pulmonary uh, and, uh, infections and so on. So I think uh, these are the main areas of uh, the problems that we are currently working on. So maybe it is time to stop now because we are running out of time and we have just enough time for taking a few questions maybe. Uh, over to you, Elena. So it's oh, I, I would crazy. just like to... I would just like to finish with uh, one uh, thing is that... Uh, we have uh, two uh, workshops, one on August 14 to 16 uh, on computational neuroscience and another on August 25 to 28 uh, on complex networks. And we are actively looking for uh, hiring research scholars in MS, PhD through the regular departmental processes as well as through the interdisciplinary research program and postdocs through the IPDF uh, Institute Post Postdoctoral Fellowship Program and also the YIF uh, uh, faculty positions. So we are, uh, these are our website and email and uh, some of our past uh, talks are also available in our YouTube channel and all the subsequent seminars we are going to upload in this YouTube channel. Yes, I'm done. Uh, uh, Elena, you can take over. Okay, greeting uh, from Potsdam. And I'm happy to be uh, participate in the such exciting seminar uh, on complex system. And by my experience, I can uh, tell you that complex system needs transdisciplinary approach. And uh, I found very impressive list of complex problems that address um, in uh, your uh, uh, complex system center. And uh, it's really uh, it's really very important uh, for students to understand uh, to find solution for the problem. Uh, you need first uh, background in physics and mathematics, and then 
to understand how system works, you need the ground in statistics and nonlinear dynamics. And then uh, to uh, trying to predict something, you need machine learning and, anal and another data analysis techniques. So it's really um, uh, multiple uh, type of experience need to be able to solve problem of in complex system. And um, so what Sayan uh, we going now, should we uh, going to answer in question? Uh, should I ask audience uh, about questions? Uh, yes, maybe we can uh, ask some questions. I mean, we can pick some questions. The, uh, there are yeah. questions and answers in the window. I can see 35 questions there. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. So, so um, if somebody will help me with, uh, so I will look uh, some yeah, questions. Yeah, yeah so, Richard, could you just tell her how to open, please? Uh, uh, for example, just click on it, right? the, so I yeah. see, I see. For example, so it's, uh, I think uh, it's difficult to take uh, 35 six questions, so I will just uh, take uh, randomly. So uh, this question to me, okay. Uh, what are the parameters that one should look for climate modeling? So uh, this is a very big topic. And um, for example, just to forecast monsoon, I use two parameters, uh, not parameters, climate variables. First of, uh, first of all, nature of air temperature that available by data, uh, by data in uh, IMD actually uh, data, and also in Tepenkari analysis data and relative humidity. So these two uh, climate variables allow me to forecast monsoon onset as withdrawal in central part of India, Telangana, and in Delhi this year. So you could find my forecast on web page on uh, Potsdam Institute of Climate Impact Research. So the next uh, question. Next question. Uh, you said for uh, this complex system, reduction approach, I think it's to minima. Reductionist approach is not suitable. However, for active uh, browning particles of self-propeller particles, example of collective behavior. Don't we use the same reductionist approach via Langevin equation? Yeah, but the, via the Langevin equation, they do interact with each other, right? And in fact, effects like swarming, etc., are an example of the fact that, the, in fact, all of self-propulsion is a consequence of this, of the kind of, of the kind of effects which the individual behavior of each particle has on the others. So, in that sense, it is, I would not exactly call it a reductionist approach. The fact that each individual entity has its own way of motion is a separate issue. That happens in many ways. That happens, that happens in, it's always there in any kind of collective phenomenon. Okay. I mean, okay, for the stochastic behavior, it works a little differently. And I think uh, someone like Anubhav may be able to give you a better answer than me. <laughs> so the next question is, for example, where is the use of complex system and electrical engineering? This is a lot of use uh, of complex system dynamics. So for, first of all, this is about power grid. So instability in power grid, this very well known phenomenon in IT Madras, I, I think also. And uh, there is a complex system and the need transdisciplinary approach to uh, take this problem, to solve this problem. So another question is, um, uh, how to use network-based technique in real life? So as you can see, uh, uh, Professor Nilimo used network-based approach to, for, uh, to forecast, to predict, uh, in Nino. Uh, so this is a real uh, life forecasting. So uh, one uh, group in our Potsdam Institute working on network uh, based analysis of power grid, how to um, construct better, uh, connect better 
uh, Greek coins to provide stability and uh, of the whole network and uh, many other applications, for example, transport, for example, um, uh, even medicine. So uh, many, many applications of network in real life. And, uh, okay. Uh, how to collect data? So actually, uh, you do not need to collect, uh, so uh, it's possible, of course, to collect data uh, for somehow, but uh, currently there is a huge source of data around the world available for analysis. So it, uh, as I told you, for example, uh, in India, Indian Meteorological Department collects a lot of data, and many of them available free, uh, available for free to download from website and to analyze. It's a lot of um, uh, data in uh, NASA website. Uh, I use example M and Curry analysis data, so you could uh, analyze every point of the on the planet or glo globally. So it's really so huge data available uh, and a lot of work for you uh, and a lot of interesting problem uh, you can solve using data analysis. So, and uh, maybe some last question. So this is a question from students. Does this program is applicable only for IT Madras students? or is possible for other students also? So Sayan or Nilema, please uh, answer this question. Yeah, as of now, this is only applicable for IIT Madras students, this dual degree program. But we are recruiting uh, students for master's and PhD through the regular processes, as well as that is, uh, through the department, uh, to the individual departments. Also, we are have another uh, modus operandi is the interdisciplinary research program. So all these details are available in our IITM website. Uh, I ask, uh, please go and visit the website. All these details are available there. Thank you. Uh, oh, thank you very much. And what should we go? Should we go to Sujit a uh, talk right now? Uh, Richu, are we out of time now? Hi, uh, Richu or Lisa? Uh, yes, 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 Dr. Sain. Yeah, yeah, formally, yeah. we, are, yeah. we yeah, have to end the session by now, uh, but yeah. the session will be live. If you want to continue the discussion, you can carry on. But uh, So the floor is open. So some of us will move to the other session. But if you would like to continue the session, you can. You can but, click on more questions and answer the questions here and the, you know, the, the meeting can go on. We don't need to end it necessarily. We don't have a hard stop. So you could take on more questions. Okay. I, the uh, other uh, session can go on parallelly, is it? Yes, okay. that's yes, right. Yes, no. Okay, fine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. And then uh, two more questions. From, uh, stu from students, from uh, chat, or should we ask our guests something? We have a guest, uh, Ram Ramazwani, and then uh, Professor Balakrishnan, and uh, Professor Bosa Tadic. Maybe we should... Uh, Ask them for comments. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. For <laughs> comment or recommendation for students. Yeah. Yes, please. Uh, yes, please, uh, both of Okay. Okay, thank Hello. you. Oh. Sorry. Okay. Hmm. Sorry. Can I speak now? Yes, please. Okay. Um, I'm interested. Uh, it's very impressive, uh, the program that you presented. Um, and uh, I actually recall how nice place you have there. I was there long ago. So thank you again for inviting me here uh, to, to give me this opportunity to see all this 
even shortly. So I'm interested um, if you have data in, in uh, neuroscience, uh, you mentioned that there is a, okay, one thing is a brain inspiring uh, computation. I, I'm not uh, an expert in that, but I'm interested in the more like in this, you know, real brain problems like diseases and this kind of thing. Do you have data or how you collect such data and uh, what kind of methods you plan to use uh, to analyze them? So this is one question, maybe somebody can answer a comment or just think about it. And the, oh. the other one is very interesting. Uh, you mentioned epidemic modeling. I'm really, I'm pretty much interested in that and would be really glad if there are students who want to collaborate over, you know, this distance with some professors there and me, including me. So, uh, so you said there are data there's machine learning, and there's networks, but also I think you need to think of agent-based modeling as a dynamics, which is uh, much closer to what's happening in these systems, right? So interestingly, nobody mentioned agent-based modeling, but it's one of the you know nonlinear dynamics uh, um, uh, Type of nonlinear dynamics modeling that uh, has uh, that can reach everywhere practically in all comp complex systems. So these are two two points that I wanted to just uh, stress once again, highlight. Okay, to think about that, and if somebody has specific questions on this, I can I will be uh, happy to answer because I have some experience in in this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Bosa Tadic. And uh, if somebody has a question, uh, let me look in the chat right now. Uh, Elena. Yes, please. <laughs> Hi. Uh, I hear the voice, <laughs> but not, not able to see the picture. <laughs> Ram Ramadwanya, please. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> okay, no, I mean, first of all, you know, I, I'm sorry, I've been intermittently in and out of uh, this meeting because of my poor connection here. But it's just phenomenal to see so many people involved in this complex systems, and especially the you know kind of directions that the uh, IIT uh, Madras group is taking. Um, I mean, I think this is making a virtue out of uh, necessity over here. Uh, we've got so many people from all over the world who are able to participate in this meeting. I think it's just a very good use of, uh, of, of the situation, so to speak. Uh, one question or, or request that I have is uh, because the IIT Madras is an institution which is, you know, uh, it's a technology institution. Uh, it would be really nice uh, if uh, the result of many of these uh, of these studies uh, would be in uh, devices or in applications. Uh, I'm sure that people are thinking about it, but it would be really interesting to know what kind of practical applications, uh, you know, especially in the neural area that people are thinking about. Uh, and, you know, with a strong focus, I think a lot of very nice stuff can be done now. Okay, so with much good wishes and a lot of hope from this particular endeavor of yours. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Ram Ramazwani. And uh, uh, if somebody have a question to Ram Ramazwani and Professor Bosa Tadic, and I, maybe Professor Balakrishnan uh, would like to uh, say some recommendations, suggestions for a student. Okay, and, th and then um, maybe later, and then I maybe I will use, uh, um, uh, I will read uh, one more question, for example, how can this complex system can help in analyzing aerodynamic behavior of wind turbine blades? So very much. So it's possible. It's possible to analyze um, dynamics, uh, aerodynamics, this complex network. And actually, next talk of Professor Sujit uh, partially 
uh, processor suggest also is uh, as I know use complex system complex network analysis uh, to um, in turbulent combustor. So uh, you could see example in the next uh, talk. So should we go to the next talk now? Yeah, sure. I think uh, what I will suggest is many of you have asked questions here. Can you please email us these questions and uh, we will try to answer them uh, separately through, uh, that way. So this is a 70 question. So yeah, there are a lot, a lot of <laughs> questions. Yeah. So I think uh, Professor Elena also needs to, is has some another meeting probably. So we would just like to maybe close this session now here. Yes, Professor, okay. sure. Like uh, we could send us uh, the questions to you from our office list. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you everyone for joining and uh, thanks Alina for uh, joining and uh, Professor uh, Boslika and uh, Professor Ram Ramaswamy and others. Thank you very much for joining. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> I have a question uh, regarding yeah. Professor Suji's talk. I thought it's the same similar, no? It's, uh, no, it's, it's a different link. It's a different link. It's, it's a different thing. Yeah. It's different. Okay, but it okay. was a poster. Okay. And how should I reach there? Yes, but this long, long term effects is not quite. Uh, so, uh, so, Professor Elena, you haven't received the Zoom link for that webinar? For another one, so it should yes. be another uh, seminar. Yeah. Please if send me to... again. Please send me again. Uh, send send me link for another also. Okay, we'll send you. Because I promised Professor Sujit to be actually a co-author of this study, and I really very interesting to see what's going on. Uh, sure, I'll I'll send it to you, Professor. Right away. Thank you very it. much. Thank you very much. And Sayan, so I just uh, was wondering that it's going uh, longer, but uh, everything is, uh, so we accomplished our goal, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So, okay. We, uh, so thank you very much for all participants uh, for this um, very exciting uh, and maybe stimulating seminar. So, you know, uh, now you know a lot of, about um, uh, possibility to use complex system in different field of research. And it's really exciting. I promise you, uh, let me say, very busy life, not easy life uh, to do research, but very, very interesting. Very, very interesting in different aspects. I uh, worked uh, in uh, in um, topic in medicine, for example, cardiodynamics. I work on uh, liquid crystal dynamics. Now I'm working in climate and everywhere. Expertise in complex system, non-linear dynamics. All this helped me in different direction. And it's really very, very interesting. I wish you good luck with uh, your choice. Uh, of your top, uh, research topic. Thank you. We have a very big team here and uh, I think all of us are quite excited about uh, uh, working in this uh, under this umbrella. So we look forward to having a lot more interactions in the next couple of years. Thank you very much. And we hope to see you physically here <laughs> as soon as possible. <laughs> I also. <laughs> <laughs> We've been, been waiting also. for the last two years. I mean, it's yes. it's been yeah. Okay, so uh, I think Bosa has gone. Okay, I'll say bye to her separately. So bye everybody. Thank you, Sian, and thank you, Richo and and Yuri. That and thanks to all our colleagues. That, yeah. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye. Thank you, everyone. So we'll end this now. Thank you.